All right, um, I've decided to try to make the fur texture just untextured. I kind of like the roughness of this and it'll work well in the type of patina that I'm going to be using on this piece, which will be a rust patina. It'll look almost like terracotta, but uh, it'll be bronze, of course. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm just uh, trying this out to see how it looks. Right now, I kind of like it. I just had an artist friend of mine stopped by and he sort of agreed with me on this. And so I'm going to stick with the, my first gut feeling on this. Be right back. Time to play with some clay. Still have to be careful of uh, undercuts, but uh, I'll try to take care of those. Kind of reminds me of one of my first uh, sculptures in in uh, ceramic class. I did a bust of a uh, biblical prophet whose face was covered with a beard and shock of hair, and I did all that with uh, this kind of a texture. It really worked out good in ceramic clay. All right, I made, I made braids, but I'm not happy with them. I think it's, with all the roughness of the uh, clay, this makes it too tight mixed with the roughness, and it just doesn't uh, go with it. So I'm going to take the braids off. It was an idea. What I am doing is I'm going over the uh, clay a little bit and trying to get rid of some of these deep undercuts with this, this tool here. This was a uh, spoon type tool and I cut the uh, tool in half and then put it in a, a uh, wooden dowel which worked out really well. See, this gives kind of an interesting texture to the uh, fur. Interesting little shadows. That's what, what you're doing, really, is basically, uh, when you're sculpting, you're creating shadows. And uh, that's all sculpting is, is it's creating shadows. This actually makes it look more like fur. And if I put every strand of hair in the uh, clay, it's just a matter of adjusting the light so I can see the texturing that I'm doing. Actually, this looks pretty damn good. And doing it this way, I'm still keeping true to the uh, form or the texture that I want by not detailing the fur, but just 
kind of like indicating it with the uh, strokes of this uh, tool. I try to look up on YouTube how other artists use uh, techniques to make fur. And uh, I got unintelligible videos where the person didn't know how to talk and was mumbling. I <laughs> didn't learn a damn thing from them. Although one person used a uh, kitchen fork to kind of make textures, but uh, and a spatula uh, on top of all that, but that was not something I wanted to do. Okay, I'm going to have a broken bottom corner on this, or bottom edge on this, because I've got kind of like that going on here. And I like to keep continuing that where it looks like it's just a uh, partial image that uh, isn't complete. I'm using a heavy-duty serrated-edged wire tool to put a different kind of texture on the, uh, the skin side of the uh, robe, or the skin, for whatever. pretty good. All right, I think I'm going to make a, a knife sheath right now. Uh, he would definitely be carrying a knife uh, as he uh, goes off into the wilderness. All right, got to finish the anatomy here of this leg and buttocks. I want the skin to have a texture as well. I don't want it to be smooth. It wouldn't match the rest of the uh, piece if I did make it smooth. Okay, this is what I'm thinking is putting the knife, actually, the knife sheath would be like this. Okay, I'm going to start putting brass tacks on the uh, scabbard. Nice sheath, I mean. <sighs> the hard thing about doing the brass tacks is getting them all the same size. I'm just uh, finishing up putting these little tacks on. These are smaller than the ones above it. 
on the uh, top part of the uh, scabbard. I'm only going to do one row of those. I actually sculpted where the handle would raise up the uh, scabbard a little bit underneath here and where the blade would be. It's not a huge knife, but it would do the job. This is going to be the last thing I do today, and it could be the last thing I do this week. Depends on Friday. Now, next week, I will be going to the foundry over in Livingston, and I'm trying to get this thing to the point where I can take it with me and get a, a good idea of what it's going to cost to produce it. And I'm going to take... Uh, the uh, clay of uh, Kiss of Spring as well. And try to get a bid on both of them. That way I can set a sale price on them. All right, I just need to straighten out that knife a little bit, okay. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm liking this bronze a lot. I mean, it's clay, <laughs> not a bronze yet, but uh, you know what I mean. Oh, I will be work, working on this arm here. I, I gotta try to get that done, but anyway. All right, everybody, have a great Thanksgiving, and uh, remember to uh, set your uh, scales back 15 pounds because uh, tonight, because uh, you don't want to shock yourself tomorrow night after dinner. <laughs> Alright everybody, I, I like how the texture on the fur came out, and uh, I, like the, I like this piece, I think it's going to be a nice piece. If I was going to have an office and I wanted to have a nice little sculpture on my desk in my office, something I could look at to give me inspiration, this would be the piece, The Warrior. Looking for danger. All right. Good night, everybody. See you next week. Or Friday. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.